Hello everybody, I'm Cameron Porter, owner of Robin Hood Studios, and this is Venture Utah. We've got a couple fantastic guests that I'm very excited to bring on to the show for you today. But first, as usual, I have a few news stories that may be of interest to business owners here in the state. Vivint Solar has been acquired by Sunrun Solar of San Francisco, the largest solar equipment provider in the nation. Vivint was previously the second largest solar provider in the nation, and now the two behemoths have joined forces. The move seems to be a home run in the minds of stockholders, as the stock prices for both companies soared the day after the deal went public. And spokespersons from each company pointed out that by joining forces, the two companies will be able to save a combined $90 million per year in expenses. The two companies have very similar business models, with Vivint having a more robust uh, direct sales channel, while Sunrun has a higher market share overall. For those afraid that the Vivint Smart Home Arena is going to change names yet again, never fear, because Vivint Solar has been a separate company from Vivint Smart Home since it was founded in 2011. The Small Business Administration has released detailed data regarding loans made under the Payment Protection Program. The SBA has made 4.9 million PPP loans, over 50,000 of which were made here in the state of Utah. The PPP loans in Utah accounted for more than $5.2 billion in theoretically forgivable loans. The SBA has also extended the PPP through August 8th. So if you have not yet applied for the PPP because, you know, you've been living under a rock for the last four months, you can still do so. Just go to sba.gov and look for it there. You can start filling out the forms. Fan X 2020 has been canceled, and the next Fan X will be September 16th through 18th, 2021. The good news is that all the tickets that have been purchased for Fan X 2020 will be honored and valid for the 2021 event. If you want a refund instead, you have until August 15th to request one. Alrighty, and now our first guest today is Jeff Arnell with Columbia Pest Control. Alrighty, our first guest this week is Jeff Arnell with Columbia Pest Control. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So, Jeff, you are here. You have been on the show before. I have. And you are back because there have been some changes. Now, I don't know if they've been since our last interview, but there have been changes somewhat recently in the, recently in the pest control world. What have those been? Very recent, the last three months or so. Okay. Uh, the state of Utah will no longer euthanize caught animals, skunks or raccoons or other animals in your yard. I don't know why, it's a budgetary thing. I reached out to the Department of Agriculture and other departments asking them why they no longer fund that and they said that their funding was cut. And oh. so if you catch an animal in your yard previously, they would come out and they would euthanize it and then they would tell you how to dispose of it. They no longer do that. So you oh, wow. as residents are on your own if you catch a critter in your yard. I see, okay, so what are the implications of that then? So how does someone deal with, the, the, with those types of pests? Few options. One, you can go to a local store or even online and purchase a life trap uh, and catch it yourself. And then you gotta figure out what to do with it at that point. Some folks will take it up in the hills and let it go. Uh, some people will drown it, which is an awful way to you know, get rid of a, uh, an animal. But the other option is to hire an exterminator, uh, like myself or other companies, to come out and either take it away for you or to trap it for you. We have, I usually take it up in the hills five miles at least away from where it was caught. That way it can't find its way home. Let it go in the hills and let nature take its course. If it can survive, it survives. If it can't, it can't. Not much we can do about that. Gotcha. Okay, so that's essentially you could st you still catch it, and instead of calling the state, you'd call Columbia Pest Control. Yeah, state won't come out. They 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 want nothing to do with it anymore. They don't have the budget for it. They won't do it anymore. Gotcha. Is there a is there a humane way to take care of the animal on their own? Is that recommended at all? Is there that's where the euthanizing came in, and unfortunately, the stuff that they use to euthanize a raccoon or a skunk uh, or a rabbit or a squirrel is called blue juice. That's the the name for it. Blue juice. But you have to have a veterinary license to use it. So. Me, as a, uh, as a pest control operator technician, I'm not licensed to use that stuff. That's the most humane way, just puts them to sleep. So the best next step is to just take them up in the hills, let them go, them. and hope if you've got a skunk, they don't squirt you as they run away. It's funny, my, uh, <laughs> my five-year-old son calls Powerade blue juice, so maybe we should call it something else. Maybe, so To avoid yeah. any possible horrific scenarios. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so... So, have, have there, so that's with uh, raccoons and uh, skunks, but this year we've seen a lot of different types of other pests and insects and things that are coming in 
that are hitting with a lot more force than they've seemed than they have in years past. Is that right? Well, I wouldn't say different types. I okay. would say um, bugs that are have not been a major problem before are a major problem this year. And you oh, okay. will find in the insect world that things go in waves. They kind of go in cycles. You know, some years you'll have a fly problem just out of control. Two or three years, no problems, and the fly problem is bad again. Hmm. This year, the earwig problem across Utah has been awful. I mean, everyone's having earwigs in their home, and their beds. I mean, they're just coming in with a force. And uh, elm seed bugs, which a lot of folks are not sure what they are. They think they're baby box elder bugs. They think they're cockroaches. They're not sure what they are, but they get in your window sills. They get in your house, and they are a real problem this year. They're just worse than they have been in years past. And it's, it's a very simple treatment to, to knock them down. Hmm. But because there are so many of them, by the thousands, we cannot kill them all. It's, it's really a tough situation, especially folks who are surrounded by a lot of trees. If you have a lot of elm trees or cottonwood trees, maple trees, or even uh, oak trees around your home, you're going to have these bugs. Uh, not the earwigs, but the elm seed bugs. Uh, earwigs are just in the ground, and that's just nothing you do about that. But if you're surrounded by trees, you're going to have these bugs, and there's no way around it, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, we've definitely seen a lot of earwigs around our house. Yep. Uh, we've seen some elm seed bugs, but the box elder bugs have been typical. Yeah. Standard in Utah. The, one of the yeah. major issues that we have is in years past, when Utah has really hard winters, it will kill off the, the population substantially. Hmm. And so they don't come back as hard the next year, and then they kind of go, their population goes up, and then it dies in the winter, then it goes up, and that was the cycle. Uh -huh. We haven't had a hard winter in Utah in about 10 years. So every year it just gets worse and worse and worse because they're not dying off like they're supposed to. The other problem is the uh, pesticides that we use, like anything else, they are building tolerance. When you introduce something for a certain amount of time, the next generation builds a little bit of tolerance and then more tolerance and more tolerance. And before you know it, the chemicals that we've been using for 10 years is no longer as effective. So we have to change the chemicals. And the different chemical companies are always changing up their formulation, making small changes to combat that. Unfortunately, you just can't keep ahead of it. And sometimes we'll treat a house three times and they're still having problems. Even though you are seeing some mm. death of the bugs, you just can't get them all. It's, well, it's a hard thing. And that makes sense because the ones that survive the, uh, the chemicals are the ones that have that natural, mm -hmm. that natural advantage, that natural benefit to resist them. And they're the ones that procreate. Yep. And they have babies and then half yeah. of those babies can do it. And then it just becomes a real problem. And we have to rotate our, our chemicals. If we're on a home and we do a home a couple times and they're still having problems, we have to rotate the chemical to a different... Um, formulation and there are hundreds of different chemicals out there that will do the same thing mm. so we have to change them up to to kind of make the bug guess and one of them's going to do it one of them's not and we just have to keep working on it till we get rid of them that's really interesting that's yeah. fascinating so uh and that's true so that's have you seen any increase with uh wood uh bugs wood boring uh related <laughs> bugs i i don't want to put certain industries on the on a you know, a situation here, but there are some companies um, or some, I would say, um, competitions that go from state to state that bring their own firewood for certain competitions. And when they bring their own firewood, they bring their bugs from other states. Now, there are a lot of bugs that we're dealing with in Utah that are not native to Utah, especially the wood destroying bugs, like some borers mm. that are coming from like back east and middle of the country. And we're not accustomed to them in Utah. So our chemicals aren't dealing with them the way that other states uh, do. So people will bring in these uh, different types of woods and then these borers or these different beetles will be introduced. Uh, those who are um, up to date with the forestry situation, a lot of our forests are being destroyed by beetles. They just come in and eat everything and destroy whole forests. And those are not usually native. They're brought in by folks from other states. And it's really unfortunate. Termites are a big problem in Utah. A lot of folks don't know we have termites. But we have a huge termite problem in Utah. Carpenter ants, everyone's got carpenter ants. They're just an issue easily dealt with, but they can be a problem. But the beetles and the borers are, are the things that are being introduced to Utah that are not native and they're, they're hard to combat. Most universities have um, sections that are studying these and figuring out their patterns to see where they are in the states. And you can just see it progressing from east to west. Each year, they just get worse and worse and worse. And mm. when they hit Utah, it's devastating. They'll take out forests. They just, they're ruining um, the country landscape. They really are. Wow. And that kind of migration, like, uh, you know, bringing in non-native species, I mean, that's the whole same situation with uh, boats, right? You, yeah. You, you, on the yeah. fans, the bugs that get on yeah. the fans. Yeah, that's why they, they say you have to clean your boat where you're at before you leave that um, body of water. 
because you will transfer critters that are not accustomed to our environment and it becomes a real problem for us uh, and it, it's, it's an awful thing, it really is. But we have tools to combat it, but if I don't know what I'm dealing with, if I've been introduced to something I've never dealt with before, it takes a lot of research. I have to call mm. around other states, other, you know, we have online um, forums that I can reach out to other owners of other companies and just say, I've been dealing with this bug, what is it? And thankfully there are a lot of companies out there who are willing to offer their information to give me um, combatant tools so we can knock down these problems. That's awesome. Yeah. So what is it, so just a reminder for people who didn't see your first interview here on the show, how does Columbia Pest Control work? How do you work with your clients? <sighs> We don't do contracts. You know, a lot of companies say, oh, we'll spray your house for the first time for $49.95. Oh, great, that's a really great deal. But what they don't tell you is now you gotta do $175 every three months without fail. And they're gonna come to your home in the winter, dead of winter, and they'll spray your house in the middle of the winter. That makes zero sense to me. Why would I go outside when it's 32 degrees and spray a, a water-based chemical around your yard? It's just gonna freeze. So the way it works with us is most of our uh, customers will reach out to us when they have a problem. They'll say, hey, it's been six months, we're having issues, can you come out? Absolutely, let's take care of it for you. Some are on a program where we come out every three months, non-contract, but they do pay for the year in advance, much like other companies. But the difference is, if you're unhappy with the service, if I come to your house two or three times, and we can't knock out your problem, I will write you a check for whatever is remaining and say, I'm sorry I can't fix your problem, I'm not gonna charge you a cancellation fee, I'm just gonna give you your money back and say, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Mm. Now that's only happened like three times in about six years, so don't get your hopes up of getting your money back because we do a pretty <laughs> good job. But for the most part, um, I feel that as a business owner, it makes more sense for people to reach out to me when they need me mm. and not have me come out just because they're in a contract saying that I have to come out um, and charge them a ridiculous amount of money for a service they don't need. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. We've been on some of those contracts yeah. and. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. For them to come out in the wintertime like that. Yeah. Okay. So for people who want to get in touch with Columbia Pest Control, what is the best way to do so? Calling or texting me directly. I do have an answering service if I'm unable to get to the call. Um, they'll take down your information and I'll get back to you the same business day. Uh, you can email me directly or you can even check out my Facebook page. Uh, it's all very, you know, all the information is there, all you need. And I'm the one who handles most of the day to day. I like to be involved with my customers. I like them to know they can trust whoever's answering the phone. Uh, and I'm usually one of the guys that comes out. So they get to know me, they get to know who I am, they get to know my personality, and they get to know that we offer fantastic service. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for being here, Jeff. Thank you for having me. All righty. Our next guest today is a good friend of mine, Arthur Peely with Lumos Paints. Arthur, thank you for being here. Good to be here. Thanks. We've talked about this before, but my oldest son is named Arthur. It's yes, a, it's a good name. It's a good yeah. connection. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. This is a great conversation that I've wanted to have for a while. It's about you do painting. You do interior and exterior painting. Is it primarily residential, commercial, both? We focus primarily on, primarily on residential, but we've been recently doing some commercial stuff as well. Awesome. Yeah. And you're growing like crazy. Yeah, it's growing fast. You know, there, there's a huge shortage of painters um, in the Utah area. I, I believe there's, uh, there's more paint jobs than there are painters. Wow. So finding work is not, is not an easy task, but there's plenty of work out there to go around. That's phenomenal. So we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, just general information about painting to homeowners. Sure. So. Um, what would you say are the advantages, like what is the reason to paint on the, in your, inside your home? Inside your home, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's plenty of reasons to paint. A lot of people would want a color change, and then the other reason is to really make your house feel, um, feel almost like new, you know? Mm. You know, walking around with kids and dogs, and even, even me, I, I scratch up my walls all the time, unfortunately, my wife, <laughs> my wife likes to point that out to me. But painting your home gets rid of those scratches and the marks on your walls, and it keeps things fresh and clean. Mm. Um, painting also kills germs that might be on your wall and in your house. Oh, really? So if there's any, I mean, it probably won't kill coronavirus, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, any germs, any dirt and things like that in, in your house, um, basic paints will kill. And there are other paints and primers you can buy. Um, a lot of people are familiar with kills. And there's yeah. shellac as well, which is a popular one, uh, a lot stronger. But those will kill other germs like staph and E. coli and other things, especially in the bathroom areas. Oh, wow. So when asking why you should paint your home, especially when you buy someone else's home, 
Um, it's highly recommended before you move in to paint it, not just because it will make it feel good and look nice, uh, it's gonna kill the bacteria and germs that are existing in there. So then for a seller, I mean, they still should, they still have an incentive to paint because the house looks new. If the seller paints it and they, they've said it's new paint, you know, recently. Sure. Um, usually it's okay and you can just get away with cleaning your walls and just wiping them down with, with uh, disinfectant. But if the house hasn't been painted in five to seven years, which is the average lifespan of your uh, interior paint, it's definitely time to, to repaint your house. Okay, every five to seven years. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. So as far as painting the inside, I'm gonna, you know, focusing a little bit on the interior aspect of this, uh, are there, what's in fashion right now? Like when you're thinking about, okay, I want to sell this house or I want to increase the appeal to people who come in and impress, you know, my guests, what should people be doing? Sure. So we've noticed, and as everyone knows, gray is, is in, right? Mm. Uh, everyone's painting their walls gray and their trim is just usually white. However, there's a shift in trends right now. Um, whereas last year and, and previously we were painting nine out of 10 houses gray, <laughs> gray walls. <laughs> uh, this year we're seeing a transition into from a three tone where you have white ceilings and white trim and gray walls uh, to a two tone and choosing white again for your trim and then going with an off-white or a cream, a warm, a warm cream color for your walls and your ceiling. Uh, and the reason a lot of people are doing this is to save money and to get that warm, warm feeling in your home instead of a neutral gray, which uh, people are starting to feel is a little bland. So that shift to cream gives a warm feeling, it makes you feel cozy at home. And the other benefit to that is since it's such a light color, the ceilings are gonna look like they're almost a third tone, almost a third color. Oh. Instead of having, you know, like we did in the 90s and the 80s, the dark walls and dark ceilings uh, with, that, with that beige, if you remember, um, now doing the cream color will open up your home while keeping two-tone. Uh, two so it'll save you money doing the ceilings and walls the same color. But it still kind of looks like that three-tone. That still kind of gives you a feel and a look of it because it still makes it feel open like you have white ceilings. Okay, so you've used a couple terms that I want to just make sure I'm understanding <laughs> okay. correctly. Three-tone and two-tone, you're just talking about two different colors of paint and three different um, colors of And paint. three different colors, yeah. And sometimes okay. people confuse three-tone with a two-tone because they'll, they'll say white ceilings and white trim. Um, but you don't want to do semi-gloss on your ceilings. You want to do it on your trim, and you don't want to do flat on your trim. You want to do that only on your ceiling, so that even, even though it's still white, it's still another sheen, which makes it a third tone. So, wow, okay. A little you confusing just, there. You just destroyed my world, everything that I thought <laughs> I believed in about paint. Okay, so, you've got, so you, you use like a flat, like a matte type of... Yeah, the most common on ceilings is a flat white to, flat. to lessen reflective, uh, reflective properties in your home. Okay. Um, and keeping it white and open, and it's, it's on your ceiling, so it just helps. That's so yeah. interesting. So th then on the trim, you want something... On the trim, you want something washable, like a semi-gloss. Oh, okay, and that's really The reason really you do semi-gloss is more shiny. The shinier your paint, the more washable your paint is going to be. Um, oh, okay. If it's flat and you try and wipe it down, go home and try and wipe down your ceiling if it's flat, and you tell me what happens. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> it won't work very well. you have to repaint it. And that makes sense, because things like chair rails and door frames, they're, they're going to get hit a lot. And they're all shinier, and they're more durable. The shinier it is, the more durable, durable and the more washable it is. Oh, okay, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Now, does that apply also to kitchen cabinets? It does. Yeah, and, and when we paint kitchen cabinets, we use a different type of paint than we would on your walls or your trim even. Oh, really? Um, yeah, we would use a semi-gloss um, or, or a satin sheen, depending on what the client likes. Um, most commonly is a semi-gloss, it's washable. And when painting, we use a, a really high quality paint um, from Sherwin-Williams is who we prefer to use. And they have a few different paints that are um, acrylic enamels or polyurethane enamels, um, and we paint with those. They flow out nicely, they, they lay out smooth, um, and they're very durable. So you can slam them, nick them, knock them, and, and you're, you're okay compared wow. to your walls where if you, if you knock those with some toys and your kids are running around, it's gonna scratch them up. So. so you've destroyed another thing, another core of my being here. <laughs> Arthur, the, the, the paint that's at Home Depot is not the same as the paint that's at Sherwin-Williams? Uh, no, it's not. Um, Home Depot, I love Home Depot, and they have, they have good quality paint um, if you're looking for something on a budget. However, when selecting paints, um, there's a lot of options out there, and it's important to study and know um, what's, what's the best quality paint. So there's a lot to look at, and you can go to your local paint store, and, and they'll tell you um, a lot about that. I, I'm not going to go into depth about that sure. today. It's, it's <laughs> a lot. Um, but from, from the research and testing that we've done, um, we found Sherwin-Williams to be the best quality paint. Huh. And so using good quality paint gets you a better durability in your home. Um, some paints are made differently for washability and things like that. And we've, we've just realized that Sherwin offers the best quality product. Wow, okay, that's really interesting. So when you're painting 
when you're on that the kitchen cabinets, is it kind of the same rule with like uh, you, you paint the trim or like the boxes a different color than the doors? Is that pretty common, or do you? Is it all kind of just as far the same? as kitchen cabinets? You said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually you do them all the same. Um, all the it's same. White, white is very popular for your kitchen cabinets. However, um, there are different styles. Um, there's a two tone style where you can do the upper cabinets one color, and the lower ones they'll go a darker, like a gray or um, navy blues are in as well for cabinets. Okay. Um, otherwise, doing that that trend that you said where the doors are one color and the box, the bases are another, that's that's not very very popular right now. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen it a few times here and there, but most people who have it and I've seen it, it's they've they've called me their house to repaint. Them. They call it <laughs> <to> repaint. It. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you're going to do two tones, it's going to be top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And and even then, you can also do uh, just your island. We just walked into the home last week, and all the cabinets are white. And the island is gray. And they weren't calling you to repaint it? No, it was brand new. It oh, okay. And it looks beautiful. <laughs> that um, actually sounds pretty cool. It does. It it, really it's cool. really nice. Yeah, it's, it's a good trend right now, and it, it looks really nice. Gotcha. You can never go wrong with white, though. So if you're painting your cabinets and you're not sure what color to pick, um, go with white. Even if painting cabinets goes out of style, white cabinets will still be timeless, and you won't have sure. problems. Now, if you have blue cabinets or gray, and painting cabinets goes out of style, that might not be a good, good thing for the future. Gotcha. It's kind of like why my dad always painted the, one of the walls painted white when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Because it, I guess it's the easiest to deal it's with. It's the easiest to deal with. You'll never yeah. have problems. It's white is white. It's pure. It's clean. Sure. It's open. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So with, you know, with all the information you're giving, you've actually kind of already answered this question for me personally, but let's address it more sure. directly, which is why hire a professional painter? Yeah, there's a few reasons, and I, I, I tell people actually three reasons. The first one is, uh, you know, get done fast. <laughs> okay, yep. <laughs> you know, if you've ever tried to paint by yourself, you know it's not fast, no. especially dealing with your day job and coming home and trying to paint and move all your stuff. You're going to get paint on your carpet. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you problems. So, but probably more importantly is the quality. Um, our painters that we have on crew, three, three of, uh, of the six painters we have have 30 years experience each. Wow. And they, they provide quality painting. They'll do it fast and they'll do it right. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. And I'll give you one example of many as sometimes not enough paint gets put on a wall, especially when homeowners do it because they're not experienced. And if not enough paint goes on the wall, it will chip later down the road. It won't last like it's supposed to. And it's definitely not washable. And mm. so definitely hiring a pro uh, is worth it. You'll, you'll get a good quality. It'll get done fast. And the third one, which is I think is the most important, even on top of uh, quality, is we'll provide you a warranty included with, with Oh, your really? Wow. Yeah, so we provide a two-year warranty with all our paint jobs. And, and on top of that, the paint has its own warranty as well. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I mean, so, we just uh, redid our son's room okay. so that he can move in because we were trying to spread everybody out a little bit. And so we got his room ready, and we did all the painting, and it took forever. <laughs> <laughs> now, we learned a lesson, which sure. is uh, we learned a lesson from some of our painting previously, which is if you do paint the trim a separate color, it takes a lot longer it does. than if you just paint everything the same color. All in one tone is all quick, yeah, and quick and easy. <laughs> so for him, we decided, all right, you're, you, ha you have one wall. You can pick a color, one wall that can be whatever color you want. And of course, he chose like blood red. So and how many coats did he put on that wall? <laughs> we put two coats on two? that red okay. wall. Okay. It probably um, needed three with a deep color like that. It may have. It may have needed three. Yeah. It looked a lot better after the second one. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. than the first each, each coat gets better every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and yeah, so... Uh, is there, as far, that actually brings up a question that I had before, which is when, if ever, is one tone where the, t where the chair rails, the trim, the molding, and the walls are all the same color, is that ever a good idea? Um, in your home, it's not really popular. Um, we have done it before. However, last time we've painted all white in the main living areas, we did a semi-gloss white on the trim, and then we did a, an eggshell on the walls and ceiling. Oh, okay, so, slightly so it different. was one tone, however, the, the trim was shinier, so it could be washed better okay. on the doors and trim. Um, usually you see one tone more in commercial office spaces and things like sure. that. Sure. Just, just a white or an off-white to keep it simple. Because um, in office spaces, you're not trying to draw attention away from, from what they're doing onto the walls, if, whereas if you, if you put color on the walls, you'll, you'll get that distraction. Gotcha. Okay, that is a fantastic answer. So for people who want to reach out to Lumos Paints, what's the best way to do it? Best way is our website or our Facebook. Um, if you go to our website, lumospaints.com, you can find links to uh, Instagram and, and our social media there. Um, our phone number is plastered right on the front there as well, and there's a contact box on the bottom of the page. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. All right, and thank you for being here with us as well. That is all we have for this episode. We will catch you next week, same time, Friday, 10 a.m.